So here we see Cornelius's brand new toy. So Cornelius, you got yourself a new buckler. That's right, it's a new buckler. It's based on an original uh, from the British Museum, but it's on permanent exhibition in Leeds for the last years now. So you can visit it there and have a look. Um, strictly speaking, the buckler I was using for the last three and a half years or so was based on the same original, but more or less loosely based. And I was fortunate enough to have a look at the original last year. So you have uh, actually uh, examined the original one? I had the uh, privilege to examine the original one. And it's a really nice, it's a, it's a wee little buckler, you could say. Um, it's only 25 centimeters in diameter, so... Okay, so uh, it looks bigger, but that's probably due to the tiny boss, isn't it? Can... Th that is right, yeah. The boss is approximately one third of the whole diameter, one could say. Okay, could and... you turn the edge towards me? So Yeah, okay, yeah. right. So this is much smaller than any off-the-shelf boss that you can find for reenactment supplies. And that is indeed based on an original... It looks pretty much like this. Okay, cool. Could you place your hand close to the boss so we get an idea of... So. Okay, so yes, that is tiny. <laughs> that is my medium to large glove size hand. <laughs> so it's like, I think it's about five centimeters or like two inches here in this uh, middle section, uh, yeah. diameter wise. Okay, can we see the back side? All right. So that's an interesting, uh, very interesting grip, very interesting handle. Yeah, this is a handle that sort of like, I like to call it a telephone handle. And, um, <laughs> you mean like the old ones? Like, like the, from the analog yeah, world? Yeah, from, from the time where telephones didn't have displays. <laughs> and um, what I immediately, note, immediately noticed about the original was that it's very narrow here. So and the, the first idea that I had... At which point you mean between... You mean, yeah, yeah in between where, where the okay. fingers go, on the inside. I it's see. about eight centimeters, I think, if All I right. remember correctly. And the first idea was that um, if I place my fingers in between here, they're almost stuck. So, so I think with okay, your... Okay, so yeah, so, so you don't even have to um, hold it and... Um, fist clamp it or grip it tightly, but it actually sticks to your hand because it's such a small hole. Exactly, that was the idea and I think it works more or less. So I can um, hold the fingers here, I don't have to use any extra finger power or gripping power to hold it in place because it basically, it can't like slip out like mm -hmm, this. I see, yeah. So, and I can easily navigate it here with my fingertips and a thumb tip. And I can... This is uh, this shape of uh, this peculiar shape of the handle um, facilitates maneuvering the shield. Indeed. So so um, uh, I always have a uh, clear idea of how it is aligned. So I can mm -hmm. align it with the um, grip facing towards the opponent or this section of the rim that I need to. You let's could say, just turn a little bit. No, no, yourself. So uh, okay. yeah, uh, the viewers have a light background. Yeah, like so. Okay. Excellent. Like this. Um, yeah, so I have uh, pretty good control about which uh, part of the rim faces forward and which I can, or which I need to use to place it in the space between the opponent and myself so yeah. that I'm pretty sure that he doesn't get an, a line to attack. And this works pretty well. So you don't, e you don't even ever make a, a fist um, holding it like no. uh, a little child would hold a sausage. <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I could barely do it this way, but it feels wrong on so many levels. So it's like... Um... <laughs> yeah, and of course, um, because we are reconstructing historical martial arts, um, the uh, artifacts that were actually used for the arts that we want to reconstruct uh, should um, teach us a lesson and educate us. And this is what this handle does, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. That's always the, the uh, thing we find very interesting, seeing uh, the morphology, certain shapes, certain patterns in the artifacts we're using, or in the originals, and finding out what they do. And in this case, so the um, first impression, so that I can hold it more easily, and it's uh, quite um, well maneuverable, um, turned out to be more or less true. So we just tested it um, and it works pretty well. It feels very natural, very precise. Okay, so we're looking forward to see some fighting with it. And um, one more question. Um, I know you had some uh, theories about uh, the spike. Well, usually people consider this just to be a weapon, but apparently when your opponent has a sword, it's a very short weapon. 
Um, you had some other ideas that you can actually lock the blade with it? Yeah, it's, it, it's difficult to explain, um, but in principle it's something like um, you maneuver it like here and like here and you might get uh, the opponent's blade stuck so in this angle here. Okay, so it, got it works with the normal boss as well, but mm -hmm. the spike of course uh, gives it like a big a larger barrier. Okay, so. I see. So it's a bit like uh, my ideas for the spikes on Germanic shields and um, I think Thrand made a video about that too. So it's more or less um, it's more of a blade catcher than a weapon, or at least that's a hypothesis that we have at the moment. Exactly, and especially the, there are some um, round shields or buckler types which have, um, which are uh, concave shaped like this one, yeah. and um, they almost always, as far as I can remember, have a very uh, much protruding spike or something. So it's always like the, the spike level is always above the the rim level, you could say. Okay. Um, the original is it um, is it concave too? That's the the interesting question. So um, the original is pretty wobbly. The um, first impression actually is so that you, it's, you mean the board is, is uh, yeah, decayed the, you know, or so yeah. And um, I haven't mentioned this. This is not even a board. These are layers. Um, okay. Like with the original, let me zoom in. Two uh, layers of leather. All right. And for, for this uh, prototype, we, um, um, we did not boil them, but we heated them up in like 60 degrees Celsius water. To, to harden it? To harden it, glue it together, and we brought it into this concave shape. So that's actually queer bouillie. Queer bouillie. Oh, it could be queer bouillie, nobody oui, really knows oui, what it is. Absolutely more. <laughs> and, um, but the overall concave shape is a bit of a hypothesis. Right. So it looks, as, as I said, it's very wobbly and it looks more or less straight. Yeah. And maybe at some later point we will make a, a straight version as well. But so the original iron rings uh, don't really tell you about the original shape of the Yeah, they're, they're completely bent out of shape. Oh, okay, so okay. some of them look like they, they are at an angle like mm -hmm. this, which mm -hmm. could suggest it was like this and later it was like compressed in okay. the ground or during restoration. Okay. It's not really clear. This is an, an hypothesis, mm -hmm. just a prototype to, to test it. Maybe we'll have another um, one which is flat. Okay, very cool.